have gone 91 yards here at the Pontiac Silverdome, and they have taken the lead 7-0. Dave Hill catching the touchdown reception from four yards out from Gary Danielson. Now George Ragsdale is back deep as Spadini kicks off high, not too deep. It'll be taken at the 10. Here comes Ragsdale across the 20. Breaks into open field at the 30, the 40. And there, the Buccaneers go on offense first and 10. Ragsdale, a 185-pound sprinter, had the big hole and shot through it. And Skladani, the man that kicked off, had to make the tackle. That would have gone a lot farther had he not done it. The 1953 Detroit Lion NFL Championship team is being honored here today. Bobby Lane, Doak Walker, some of those great ones are back. I saw Bobby and had a little chat with him. Say Bobby was up keeping the band going at 3 o'clock this morning. <laughs> He said that was a partying football team. They really had a lot of fun and a lot of love for each other. Well, that's great players. A lot of them are in the Hall of Fame. Mike Ray throws. Timing pattern. Obradovich, the tight end, couldn't get to the football as Ray was hit down hard just after releasing the ball. There's 41 players from Southern California in the NFL. More than any other school, there must be 15 or 16 of them in this game. There's New England still calling it on there. Horace Ivory ran one in from three yards out to make it 13 to nothing. Miami's back in front of Buffalo. Your premium field goal. So the word around the league is now you have New England right where you want them when you have them right off your schedule because they are really something. Mike Ray was a little late with that pass. Second and ten, he rolls it out. Weaver rushes him. Here's the throw. It's good for a first down and maybe a lot more. Morris Owens is finally knocked down to the 42-yard line. Had he not been caught and hit down on the play by Jimmy Allen, Morris Owens might have gone the distance. Well, this is a... Here he is rolling out to his left. Looks like the play was designed. Yes, you look at Dave Revis over there blocking. Play was designed to get him out of the pocket. He picks out the receiver. And as you said, if Jimmy Allen doesn't make this open field tackle, Morris Owens can run a long way with it. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers move on now, trailing 7-0 late in the first quarter. Time running out, eight seconds to play in it. Here's Ricky Bell, and the big guy powers his way ahead for a 12-yard gain. First down Buccaneers as the first quarter comes to an end. There's the gun. Al Baker knocked him down. Tampa Bay having good success running right at Detroit. So the Buccaneers with a good drive going now. They could come back and take it into tie this game up when we come back. Gary Danielson with impressive numbers early in the game. Most of them coming during that 91-yard touchdown drive for the only score of this game. He's from right nearby. Outside Pontiac led his high school team, Divine Child, in the Michigan State Championship, went to Purdue. Came to the Lions as a free agent, has done very well. Here comes Ricky Bell again. There's that acceleration. He's getting 10, 11 yards a pop. Got another first down and a first down carry. Boy, he makes an excellent run here. He showed you a little burst right at the end. 6 2 2 20. And he just outruns, gets good blocking from Giles, also Davis. They just staying on their feet, and he gets outside, gets another first down. Taking a page from the juice, don't take a hit when you don't have to. Saw the guy at the angle on him, stepped out, got a first down to the 21-yard line. So Ricky Bell has been a very impressive rusher in this game. He is the second back. Behind Johnny Davis, Bell with five carries and 40 yards rushing. Some more this time. One of those great ones, they look like they're stopping they slide for a couple more. You know, Detroit isn't used to people just sticking it right down their throats, and uh, that's what they've done on this drive. Only one pass, the, the good pass to Morris Owens on the rollout, but uh, they're just running straight ahead and nothing very fancy. So the ball is now advanced to the 18-yard line. Second down and seven coming up for Tampa Bay. Detroit in the lead early in the second quarter, 7-0. Ricky Bell busts through, and Bell keeps on trucking and gets another first down as he's down close to the 10-yard line. 
good blocking from the offensive front of the Buccaneers. Boy, they've really put that unit back together. They're doing the job again, running right at Al Baker. Horton out in front. Revis did a good job blocking him then. And Bell picks up enough for another first down. Here's how the first quarter statistics broke down. Lions with that long drive, a dominating possession time, which very often is an indication of what the scoreboard looks like. It is in this case. Lions leading 7 0, but Tampa Bay now with first and 10 at the 11. They conceivably could get another first down. They've run very well right at Detroit. Bell is the guy, the second back in the eye set. He gets the football. That time, the Lions are looking for him, and Doug English, big defensive tackle from Texas, slips the block and gets Ricky Bell for no gain. Great anticipation by the Lion defense then. Slanted right into the play. Doug English making an excellent play, penetrating, getting in the backfield. That's where you get Ricky Bell, get him before he gets started. Yeah. If you can. The Lions and the Redskins are scoreless in the second quarter. Uh, the Giants and the Redskins. <laughs> nice New England again. Posey with his third field goal. This one from 37 yards. Mike Ray takes a look into the end zone. Touchdown Tampa Bay. Jim Obradovich, the tight end, another USC player. With the good hands, he was a draft choice of the New York Giants. They released him. And the Buccaneers go 59 yards in eight plays, and an extra point now will tie it up. Boy, what a good throw by Mike Gray. Right in the pocket, good pattern. Ball right on the money. Good catch by Obradovich. Take a look at it from behind the quarterback. Look at the protection he gets. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, you th you thought you might have seen a hole, didn't you? Almost got a takedown on that one. Only holding if you get caught. There you go. Donahue booms the extra point up and good. And so, with 12 minutes and 34 seconds left to play in the first half here at the Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan, it is Detroit 7, Tampa Bay 7. With Sonny Jurgensen, this is Don Cricky back at the Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan as O'Donohue approaches the ball. He just tied the game with the extra point after the touchdown throw Ray to Jim Obradovich. Coming hard up the middle and with the ball is Freddie Scott. Very nearly lost it. The ball is spotted down at the 21 yard line and there the Detroit Lions going offense first and 10. Next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern Time, 3.30 Central and Pacific, it's the CBS Sports Spectacular, including the World Finals of the National Hot Rod Association. Boy, they go too. Top fuel, funny cars, and pro stocks will be highlighted. The site was the Ontario Motor Speedway in California. You'll also see the world's strongest men competition in the World Series of Poker. Highlights of that to be televised. That's next Saturday in the CBS Sports Spectacular. Swing pass. Came in on the one hop. Is that a free football? That might be a lateral. That was behind. I think Tampa Bay's got the ball. They do. That was ruled a lateral. It was, it was definitely a, forward. a lateral. It was. Richard Wood came up with the ball. Take a look. Ball has to go forward. He had to throw it in front of the, the on rushing lineman, and that's what caused it to be a lateral. The Lion play is actually trying to get to the ball, but he just couldn't get to it. Richard Wood picks it up, and the ball is spotted at the seven yard line, first and goal there. Horace King was trying to recover that thing. 12 minutes and 15 seconds left to play in the first half. The Buccaneers and the Detroit Lions tied 7-7, and now Tampa Bay with a chance to take the lead in the game. Mike Ray at quarterback goes to Ricky Bell. And a penalty marker goes down as Bell takes it inside to the five-yard line. Holding penalty is going to be signaled, it looks like, against the Buccaneers. That's the call. Yeah, it may have been... Rocky Freitas again, try to get the official's call. Now the ball goes to the 17-yard line. It'll be first and goal there. Well, when you take it, to be an opportunistic team, you've got to take advantage of breaks like this. You can't afford to make mistakes and take yourself out of scoring territory. 
So here is the Markoff against the Buccaneers, a holding assessment against them, and that gives them sec first and goal from the Detroit 17-yard line. Number 74, offense, repeat first down. Guess who? They got you again, Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Detroit. That's right. Now let's see what Mike Ray and the Buccaneer offense does. They send John McKay out wide to the left. Morris Owens is deployed as a slot back to the left at the lower corner of your screen on the left side. Now he comes in motion, 85. And a cornerback, Walt Williams, goes with him. Ray rolling out, big rush against him. And Mike Ray bails out. That was his only alternative as the Lions had the downfield receivers covered and the rush was on. Good defense. They came in a blitz too, Don, and uh, very smartly he got out of bounds. They had run a little trick up front. You see English, Woodcock running a little game. And right there, very smartly. If I could have only run that far to the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> that was that hurt, didn't it? When you knew they were coming and you saw a way out, couldn't get there in time. Throw it away. <laughs> Sometimes they still hit you. Good news on Nat Terry, which we'll bring you in a moment. Good news on Nat Terry. Here's a throw into the end zone. The report on Nat Terry is as follows. He has been examined in the locker room. It does not appear to be a serious injury. You recall that he returned the opening kickoff of the game. The rookie from Florida State returning it for Detroit was down on the field for over 10 minutes with an apparent head or neck injury. He was removed on a stretcher. But the preliminary report is it does not appear to be a serious injury to Nat Terry. He's been taken to a local hospital for observation and x-rays. 11.57 left to go in the first half as Tampa Bay gets a big break recovering a lateral down at the Detroit Lions seven yard line but a holding penalty has set the Buccaneers back and then a big pass rush by the Lions more lost yardage now it's third and goal from the 23. Nickel defense in. Ray runs it himself. He's not done yet and Ray is inside the 10 and all the way down to the nine yard line. Another dimension is added by Mike Ray, a scrambling, rolling quarterback. This is going to make this field goal attempt. Take a look at it. This is what he sees. Pressure was coming like it was almost designed. Again, very close to being a holding call. Makes a pretty good move here. Quarterbacks aren't supposed to make those kind of moves, are they? Good Not run usually. is going to make O'Donohue's field goal a little easier, isn't it? A whole lot easier. Now becomes a 27-yarder. He's got plenty of distance. Let's see. There's a penalty marker down, I think, at the line of scrimmage. And counting the people on the field, how many people they got? How many blue shirts? How many white ones? <laughs> it's been a lot of counting. A legal procedure is signaled against the Lions. The old adage, don't take points off the board. We did not get the official signal the kick was good from anyone except the holder, Dave Green. Well, it'll still be. They should keep the field goal, I would think. Oh, yeah, they don't have a first down even with the, the penalty. Now, what are they going to do? They're not putting the points up yet. We're going to have a little council pass. John McKay just came in to tell the referee. Yeah, some of them think it's a first down. It's not a first down. Illegal procedure. 12 men on the field on defense during the field goal. The penalty is declined. Tampa gives up the three points. We'll have a first and goal. I don't see how defensive penalty is just a defensive penalty that calls for a automatic first, first down. down. Illegal procedure against the defense. Because they don't get enough penalty to give them a first down. I never did understand the rules of football. Do you? I didn't know them when I, I played. I, knew them. I, didn't think, I didn't think illegal procedure was a first down call. I don't think some of the others think so either. I didn't know it. Well, at least somebody else is confused as we are. <laughs> now the guys are taking their hats off out there. I figured it might be a while. Let's see this again. Hey, I, I, think error. I was looking at that stage. That's right, I you were. I thought would give a first down. It will not. Tampa accepts the three points. <laughs> it gets That's us right. off the hook, eh? Well, we got us off the hook. <laughs> it wasn't enough for the first down. 
is ready to write the announcers don't know the rules again, huh? Yeah. We'll be back in a moment with Tampa Bay in the lead, 10 to 7. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have now scored 10 points in less than a minute and 20 seconds. Big turnover culminating in a Neil O'Donohue field goal that gives the Buccaneers a 10-7 lead after they trailed 7-0. We have 11-13 to play in the first half. There is Freddie Scott, number 87, back deep for the kickoff that O'Donohue is going to put his foot into right now. And another official timeout. Officials are getting some booze here today. They're going to have another conference. that are having problems in the NFL this year are not just the Bears and the Lions. The Zebras are also having a problem. Ah, uh, the Zebras. Hey, I, get, I have to admire him. He said he made a mistake and yeah. corrected it. But Donahue puts a charge into it, carries a yard deep in the end zone. Coming out of the end zone is Jesse Thompson, a rookie, and he is chopped. Bill Kohler, 77, came down to hammer him. And so the Lions go back on offense to trailing in the game 10 to 7. There is a lot of regional action next Sunday on CBS. The Eagles and the Giants playing outside New York and New Jersey will be at that one, Sonny. Should be a good one. Cardinals and the Redskins at Washington, Atlanta at Chicago. New Orleans plays the Cowboys at Dallas. Green Bay and Denver, that's a big one as a doubleheader game. Detroit plays at Oakland, the Rams and the 49ers at San Francisco. So consult your local listing for the games and times in your area. Don't forget the NFL today with Brent Musburger, Jane Kennedy, and Irv Frost a half hour before kickoff. Up the middle, Horace King runs hard, breaks, tackles, he's in open field. Mike Washington takes it, and King is going to go the distance. An incredible run. But there is a penalty marker down. And we might have a clip against the Tampa Bay lineman way downfield. 75 yard run from scrimmage. Well, what a great run he made. Breaking tackles. It's a touchdown. The play is the call is against Tampa Bay. Does he ever break tackles? And then he showed his smartness by waiting for people to come down the field and throw blocks for him. Mike Washington, who was in pursuit, is down on the field right now. Well, this is worth taking another look at. Right up the middle, gets hit right at the line of scrimmage, breaks the tackle right there by Cotney. Breaks a tackle by Brown, and then he's out. But watch what he does here. He slows up enough to pick up some blocking. He lets Dexter Bussey come in to throw the block. Pretty good piece of blocking there. And then he goes on down for the touchdown. Horace King, great run. So the Tampa Bay defense, the best in the NFL at stopping the run, averaging only 3.2 yards per carry to the opposition. That time gives up the big gainer, a 75-yard touchdown run. Mike Washington's up and all right going off the field with the trainers. Yeah, that play was run right at Dewey Selman and Dave Payer and just got some good blocking right there and broke it and went the rest of the distance. Well, that was a shocker. Tampa Bay wasn't looking for that one, so the Lions, who gave up 10 points to Tampa Bay, in a minute and 19 seconds, now come back and strike quickly to take the lead. Detroit going in front here 13 to 10, with 10.49 left to play in the first half. This is Don Crickey with Sonny Jurgensen, the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. Benny Ricardo now ready to try the point after Danielson will hold. It is drilled up and good, and so, the Lions on a 75-yard run by Horace King come back and take a 14-10 lead over Tampa Bay. And we'll be back with a lot more second quarter football in a moment. Monty Clark has seen his team strike back 75 yards from scrimmage. Horace King taking it the whole way as John McKay now sends his Buccaneer receiving unit out, and they trail in the game 10 to 14 to 10. Spladini kicks off and well. This one's going to carry into the end zone. Ragsdale, two yards deep. The wedge forms, and Ragsdale's right behind it. Ragsdale out across the 25, gets the ball out to the 28. 
A 30-yard return by George Ragsdale. And here's Horace King's touchdown run once again on replay. You watch it right at the strength of the defense, right at Dave Fair. You'll see him come right up the middle. Inside of Richard Wood, you see the block on Fair. Then the missed tackle by Cotney Brown. He's out. Looks like he could go all the way here, but Mike Washington runs him down, so he waits for a block here by Dexter Bussey, and he goes all the way, 75 yards. You don't think he's happy? Sure looks it. Horace King on the payoff end, and all the way, 10.37 to go, first half. Mike Ray looking to put it up, first down, home run ball, going for it. Is Giles a tight end? He almost got to the ball. There is a penalty marker down in the secondary, however. Let's see if we're going to have the chucking roll. And only Buttman in the first five yards. Giles was the tight end who came to Tampa Bay as part of the trade that sent the number one draft choice to Houston, which was subsequently used for Earl Campbell as the number one pick in the last draft. Giles, a second year tight end out of Prairie View. Excellent speed. He weighs almost 250 pounds. He's as fast as any of the wide receivers, or most of them. Here we go. We'll get his call here. Illegal contact. Number 29, defense. Automatic first down. So the Buccaneers just missed in a long throw, but they do get the penalty yardage for a first down, a five yard assessment, and an automatic penalty. Automatic first down as the ball is out and out of the 33 yard line. Mike Gray threw that ball a long time then. It was very close to a completion. Johnny Davis runs with the football on that very far. Detroit closing down on the run. They've been going to Ricky Bell, the deep back in the eye set. This time they went to the fullback, Johnny Davis, and Detroit was ready to hit him. John Woodcock got him. Again, running back to the cavity of the defense. The Lions had overshifted one way, but they very smartly slanted back to that side. Tony Dakin, special teams player, linebacker out of Georgia Tech, shaken up for Detroit. Second down and nine as Ricky Bell goes in motion for the Buccaneers. Ray swings it out to him. They set the blockers, and Ricky Bell rips it open for first down. Bell got the ball up to the 43-yard line where he had to go for the first down. A great acceleration here by Bell. You can see just a little quick pitch after going in motion. Good safe play. Good block by Gary Pitts. But not only does he accelerate, accelerate well, but he's got such good strength. The New York Giants have taken a second quarter lead. Three to nothing over the Washington Redskins on a Joe Danello 32 yard field goal. So in one punt so far in this game, both teams moving the ball with diverse and explosion in the offense. Ricky Bell takes a tackler with him ahead after he was hit at the line of scrimmage. He got ahead for two or three yards. Ed O'Neill made the tackle. But just the strength of Bell got him a couple of yards out of it. Scores coming in. The Broncos and the Browns scoreless in the second quarter at Cleveland. New England putting away Houston in the second period. 23 to nothing now. Miami having a tough time at Buffalo. Bill scoring more than was expected. Trailing 16-14 second period. The Jets leading the Philadelphia Eagles 3-0 in the second period at Philadelphia. The Giants now lead Washington 3 0 in the second period. Second and eight, and our score here is, of course, 14 to 10 as Ed O'Neill fills the gap and knocks down Johnny Davis, so that brings up third and long yardage. 14 10 Detroit in the lead. There's been a change at Philadelphia. The Eagles have just put some points up and lead the game 7 to 3. The Eagles have beaten the Jets the last three times they've played. Shut him out the last two. Jets, I, I was impressed watching the Jets play. They only average 1.6 years of man and experience, 24 years in age, youngest team in the league, youngest team in the league in years. But they're six and four and a playoff contender. Ron Jaworski passed for the touchdown. To Harold Carmichael, an 18 yarder. So he's now caught one in about 4,000 games in a row. There's a tough throw. That's got to be a marker. It is. Radovich was 
hit before the ball came in by Williams, number 21, Walt Williams, second-year cornerback out of New Mexico State. This is a little juggling act by Mike Ray in the back here. <laughs> he was going to his bag of tricks to pull this one out. Let's take a look at this. I just, I think he loses a handle on the ball First here. Interference. He lost it there. Number he popped the ball. Defense. And then he threw it. Automatic first down. Right Number there. 21. Oh, got him a little soon. So it is an automatic penalty and first down at the point of infraction. The interference called at the 44-yard line of Detroit. First and 10, Tampa Bay. Lions lead the game 14-10. 7.23 left to play in the first half. Second back through is Ricky Bell. It looks like the juice, doesn't he? The way he keeps that ball in front of him. Or he changed on it. Look for that daylight. Broke it outside. Just took a little step outside and found a little crease to get it into. Of course, he followed O.J. Simpson at USC. Mike Ray, as you see, with seven throws, 45 yards, and four completions. They're going to go back to that tight end deep throw again. Obradovich was wide open. Yeah, that last one that uh, he juggled a little bit, he made a very... He got lucky a little bit there because he threw it very late and it could have been picked off but the man had his back to the ball. Ray, good play fake. Now he's got a problem. He throws. He's got a man open. Giles, the tight end. Boy, he's holding that football. Jim Brown was about the only guy that got away with that without fumbling. Right out for grabs. It's a first down. <laughs> Ray wanted to throw the slant pattern this time. He sets up to throw it said nope maybe not look for somebody else and he throws as you see throwing the ball on the run makes a good throw there to Jimmy Giles it's 6'3 241 you can carry the ball anywhere you want to <laughs> they don't tackle football players so much in this league anymore as they tackle the football that's why you see so many fumbles a hard helmet will separate a man from a football very quickly here is Ricky Bell the best shot that an ex-Trojan Mike Burns has to give him. They exchanged some words. They were teammates at USC, Burns and Bell. There's an example of uh, the strength of Ricky Bell. You can see taking the ball just a slant. You see the blocking there by Giles. You see Davis coming through a blocking. But watch Burns stick him right here. Uh-oh, no face mask. Trying to avoid that face, but you see the drive of the legs of Ricky Bell and a lot of people around that football. A lot of blue shirts. Ricky Bell rushed for more yardage than any player in NCAA history in Southern California except one, Ed Marinero of Cornell, and he was six yards short of his total. Running with the ball is Johnny Davis. On a second and seven play, Johnny Davis hammers the ball down to the Detroit 25 yard line. Miami. Buffalo, Miami, again. huh? They're having a real Donnie Brook up there. 22 to 14 now. Bob Greasy hit Nat Moore 16 yards. The point after touchdown was blocked. Hey, the only way you can cover Nat Moore is with a big fish net. <laughs> He's open every play. He used to have receivers that were open every play. Yeah. Even on running plays. <laughs> Throw it to me. Throw it to me. I'd say they don't cover you on running plays. <laughs> Tommy McDonald. Third down, long three. Ray takes a drop, and the rush is on. Ed O'Neill coming out of blitz gets him. Al Baker was also coming, but Ed O'Neill got there first 55, the middle backer. Here he comes. Where'd everybody go? Backer blitz in the red. Oh, look at the man holding. Right at, watch the man up the middle. Right up the middle. See the Woodcock of English holding, not letting the blocker get to Ed O'Neill. That frees him to go in. Boy, he drew a crowd in a hurry that time, didn't he? Yes, sir. Now Donahue's going to try a long one for the Buccaneers. This will be set down at the 38 or 48 yard attempt. He's going to get there. He's just going to get there. It does. Neil O'Donahue, a 49 yard field goal he's credited with. And we have a one point game on the board. 3.51 left to play in the first half. As Mr. O'Donohue from Dublin, Ireland makes it 14 13 Detroit. Neil O'Donohue just hit a 49 yard field goal, his longest as a professional. 
And now his ensuing kickoff is into the end zone and will not be returned. So with 3.44 left to play in the first half, the Lions will go on offense with a one-point lead at their 20. Tonight on CBS, if you're a collector of anything, see 60 Minutes at 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central and Mountain Time. Then David Jansen stars in an all-star cast of the premiere of The Word. Dallas follows, and you'll share tense moments with the Ewing women. Staggered by reports that Bobby and Jr. are missing in a plane. Watch all three programs tonight on CBS, leading off with 60 minutes. 3.44 to play. First half, Pontiac Silverdome. Lions have the lead by one. And here is Horace King, who took that play 75 yards for a touch the last time he had it. King the ball, Scott Richard Wood got him this time. A few more people around the football this time. Took a little nap on that last play. Turns the game right around. Yes, Tampa Bay scoring yes. fast, running right through him. So now we have 3.20 left to play. First half, time running. Second down and six coming up for the Lions. Freddie Scott comes out wide to the right. Jesse Thompson has got three touchdown passes. The last three games is wide to the left. And they're out. Here comes Freddie Scott. They've got an angle on him. Nicely defensed by the Buccaneers staying at home was that was Leroy Selman all the way out there 63 find most plays will go to the left side of the Tampa Bay defense because Leroy is on the right side a lot of people read that correctly and stayed at home not only Leroy but Danny Reese who's in there for Mike Washington now at the right cornerback. Things the accolade you hear about Leroy Selman, not only as a player but as an individual, he's a better human being than he is a football player. Danielson throws a timing pattern, and the ball is caught. The ball is caught, almost intercepted. Coming up with a football was Horace King, who is having a career here today. What a play this was! It looked like Cedric Brown was going to intercept the thing. Watch Danielson going back, coming out of the backfield at the bottom of your screen is Horace King. Watch this ball, how everybody converges right on the ball, almost intercepted. Big play, picks up 31 yards, a first down. For Two Detroit. minutes to go in the first half, and we'll be back in a moment. Two minutes left to go in the first half. The Lions get a big gainer. Danielson throwing to Horace King, who earlier ran 75 yards for a touchdown for the Lions. And now it is first and 10 at the 46-yard line of Tampa Bay. Lions leading the game 14 to 13. Danielson play fake, and he's got to hurry. He gets it away, and a man is wide open. His tight end, Dave Hill. And he's all the way down to the 28-yard line. David Hill has been wide open in that zone all day long. Look how open he is. Releasing a little play action fake. Good pass protection. Watch him. Nobody around him. Good for 20 yards and a Lion first down as the clock now is running with 133 to play in the first half. Detroit challenging again, leading Tampa Bay 14 to 13. Dexter Bussey hit hard by Richard Wood as he advances the ball down to the 25-yard line and the Lions signal for and are allotted. One of their three timeouts. 120, as you see, left to play in the half. Plenty of time here. Gary Danielson coming over to talk to Monty Clark. Find out exactly, make sure everybody is on the same page. Very important to have that at this juncture. The Lions have not had a strong picking game in the recent weeks. Ricardo's had some problems. So Tampa Bay now finds itself defending against a Lion offense that's come up with big play after big play to take the lead in this game, 14 to 13. A couple of scores. Denver is leading the Cleveland Browns seven to nothing in the second quarter. Greg Morton's back playing again. Hit Raleigh Odoms for 25 yards. And the Bears are leading Minnesota seven to nothing. A two-yard run by Walter Payton. That game's in the first quarter. Bears are not without their problems these days. 
Lion quarterback Gary Danielson has thrown six touchdown passes in his last three games and one more here today. So he has been on a hot streak. Through for the first score of this game to Dave Hill is tight end, then connected with Hill a moment ago for a 20-yard gainer as the Lions are challenging time effect. Your 120 to go, first tap. Lawrence gains a big power back, breaks tackles as the Buccaneers have been making the hits but not making the hold. As Lawrence Gain, a 235-pound fullback from Wyoming, leaves some Buccaneers strewn in his wake. He's a guy who was banged up a little earlier in the year as they go into the hurry-up offense. I'll get back to that. Danielson looks, throws, and puts the ball away to stop the clock with 53 seconds to play. Line of scrimmage is the 13-yard line. It'll be second down and 10 from there for Detroit. Lawrence Gaines is the big back that they need. They missed him at the beginning of the year. He is their one big power back, being 6'1", 232. They missed him early in the year. So 53 seconds left as we're set to go here. Sonny, what do you look for as a play call? Well, I'm sure they conferred with the coaches, know exactly what they want to do. I don't know what uh, the game plan is uh, inside of the 15-yard line. You have special plays here. I'll tell you, one guy I'd be looking for, though, and that would be David Hill. Dave Hill's running a pattern over the middle. He has the ball, and he will go in for a touchdown. You got it. Okay, let, let's see you move. David Hill at the bottom of your screen, a little underneath pattern, comes across. Very simple play. Look how everybody cleared out that side, and he can smell goal line right here. What's the effort of getting in the end zone? Giving yourself up. This is it from ground level. Everybody cleared the side. Good play choice. And the man they wanted to go to, David Hill. Dave Hill coming over the middle was never picked up by a linebacker, and he was wide open. Ricardo hits the point after, so with 45 seconds left to play in the first half, the Lions take command of the game at 21 to 10. Tampa Bay and quarterback Mike Ray will have 45 seconds with which to work before the first half comes to an end. It's a long football game, long first half. The series championship of women's tennis is coming up next Saturday at 3 o'clock Eastern time here on CBS. Live coverage of the finals held in Palm Springs, California. Chris Everett will defend her title. Others in the field include Virginia Wade, Martina Navratilova, the reigning Wimbledon champion. The field of eight was chosen based on points earned for tournament placings throughout the year in 28 international tournaments. That's next Saturday, 3 o'clock Eastern time here on CBS. Here at Detroit's Pontiac, Michigan's Silver Dome, it is the Lions in the blue uniform set to kick off, leading Tampa Bay 21 to 10. Ragsdale, 21 to 13, excuse me. 21 to 13. Now here is the... Return on the onside. Looks like Tampa Bay had the ball all right. Lions didn't want to give him much of a return. Ragsdale's been tough against them. And now with 38 seconds left in a the half, they have some time uh, to pick up a first down, get in O'Donohue's range for a field goal. O'Donohue hit the longest of his professional career earlier, a 49-yarder. 38 seconds on the clock. Buccaneers with a full complement of timeouts. Mike Ray swings it out to Ricky Bell. Bell heading down the sideline, gets out of bounds to stop the clock after he gets a first down. He's on the Detroit side of the field, out of bounds at the 47. Good smart play. He set this up. Watch your move after he makes after he catches. Just a little swing pass. But watch him go inside and just freezes Charlie Weaver to get outside, and then he goes up the sidelines, stopping the clock. 30 seconds left. Ricky Bell on the swing pass gains 12 yards for the Buccaneers. Detroit leading the game 21 to 13. As you see, 30 seconds remain in the first half. Mike Ray against a blitz steps in and is sacked. 46-yard line. Detroit has 31 quarterback sacks so far this year. 
coming into the game they have two to that's the fourth today so they have 35 for the season which is substantially more than they had all of last season they only had 32 all of last year Mike Gray going over to talk with John McKay say so what do you want to do coach Yes, Billy Nelson standing here pretty good stats for the first start six nine how does the conversation usually go in a situation like this well, and right now they're trying to decide whether or not they're going to you know they got second and very long you don't want to take a chance they may decide just to run the ball here or they may decide to try to put it up and get in field goal range the ball is at the 46 yard line tomorrow night on CBS watch for mesh an hour earlier than usual eight o'clock Eastern seven central the mountain time one day at a time follows mash also an hour earlier than normal then stay tuned for one of the season's major dramatic events the word based on Irving Wallace's powerful bestseller and starring David Jensen James Whitmore and Florinda Vulcan the word part one tonight part two tomorrow night on CBS talking about them going to the sidelines down uh, sometimes coaches will feel like look uh, just don't make a mistake here and uh, give them an opportunity to run one back on us. You just don't know their particular feelings, you know, how the team has been playing. You have to be impressed with Danielson, the Lion quarterback, the free agent quarterback from Purdue, who has thrown so very well in this game. Pitch back. Lewis Carter runs with the ball and steps out of bounds. Got back across midfield and down to the 47-yard line. 20 seconds left to play. So he got back the yardage that was lost on the previous sack. Yeah, pretty good play. Uh, again, not having to use a timeout. Carter getting out of bounds. 20 seconds, still a lot of time. Let's see what they try. Pretty smart, not trying to get it all back after the sack on one play. They elected to go with the pitch out and take what they could get. John McKay comes out wide to the left now. Out on the right flank. Morris Owens. Ray takes a drop. This time they give him some time. Now he loses it. Scrambling. Baker gets it. Fifth sack of the game for the Lions. And that man right there is the leading Bubba. the Lions in sacks. Ray Bubba Hatchin. Baker, they call him. Bubba Baker, and here he comes. He had some time here. Oh, what a shot he gave the back then, Lewis Carter. But he just too quick. Mike Gray just couldn't outrun him going out that side. Doug English also in on the chase. Baker's come in and played like an all pro. He was drafted in the second round. The number one draft choice of the Lions was Luther Bradley. All American cornerback from Notre Dame. And now the first half comes to an end with the Detroit Lions holding to a 21 13 game. A first half that has seen a lot of offense. Lions scoring first, Danielson to Hill, Tampa Bay coming back and taking at one point a 10 7 lead, scoring those 10 points in a minute and 19 seconds. Beneficiaries of a turnover deep in the Detroit area of the field. And then the Lions come back on a 75 yard touchdown run by Horace King and another touchdown throw to Dave Hill, and they have the lead at halftime 21 13.